Welcome to the 100th Monkey Radio with Tom and Ramon. Oh, we've got uh, we got our first repeat guest tonight, don't we, Ramon? Yeah, our very yeah. first guest when we first started. Yeah. For those of you who've been with us since how long has it been now? Uh, we're coming up six on months? Se- oh, yeah, six months now, November 17th. So uh want to welcome our newest country, Mongolia. Uh, welcome Mongols, or however you say that. Mongolian. <laughs> uh, Mongolian. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty amazing. We got 59 countries now that are, that have listened. So, yeah, I'm, I'm humbled by that. But, uh, so we've got, uh, tonight with us, Jay Poland. I, uh, I'm going to forego any bio because I think everybody listening to this probably knows exactly who we're talking about. If not, uh, uh, while we're, uh, going through this show, uh, pop on over to eceti.org, eceti.org, and you can check out James and what he's all about. And uh, James, how you doing tonight? Doing great. Yeah, so uh, a lot of things happening this summer, not not just in all the conferences and lectures and and all that, but boy, the energy is just amazing, absolutely amazing. There's there's been some things going on just in my own life that. That has just been flooring me. Uh, yeah, it's off the off the chart. You know, a lot of it ties into the Mayan calendar. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This ninth wave. Which what day are we in now? The uh, third third day. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's it's ramping up something fierce. Uh, I've been having, you know, I I I've had a couple of dreams in my lifetime that I remember. You know that yeah, and just in this last week. I got one of those, uh, my daughter gave me one of those ionic foot baths. Oh, yeah. And uh, while using that, I'm, I'm using a visual, I meditate while I'm doing it, and I'm using a, a visualization of decalcifying my pineal gland at the same time. And I'm just uh, visualizing it, uh, crust falling off of it and for, flow, it flowing through my body and out my feet. And I didn't think about this until this afternoon. I talked to Ramon about some dreams I'd had. And I didn't think about it till this afternoon that these dreams started coming right after I started using this the, the foot bath. So I'd have to say that that things are starting to clear up for me. Uh, mm-hmm. I found mm-hmm. myself I found myself in fifty one seventy five last night. Wow. And I I looked at a I actually uh, Ramon thought it was was quite remarkable that I actually. Uh, Looked at a computer and was able to operate a computer screen and check the date on it. Uh, you know, like on Windows, you go down and open up the calendar. I opened up the calendar on a computer to check, see what day it was. And it was August 17, 5175. You know, I was, I was pretty. It took us that long to get computers up and running again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in a, I was in a strange, it was uh, kind of a bizarre, setting it was it felt metallic i was in a room with a bed and a desk and and a very strange uh cupboard type thing on the wall that was a uh, uh, like little pods you pulled little pods out of it and i had to get dressed so i got dressed and i walked out the out of the door and i was in a corridor and a lot of people walking around and it looked like about 50% of them were in some form of uniform, and the rest were uh, just regular clothes, and uh, all human. And uh, it, it felt, I, I told Ramon, I couldn't tell whether or not it was like something underground or uh, a ship out in space or, or what it was, but it did not feel like I was on the surface of the planet. So Interesting. Yeah, there's... There's a lot of people that see different timelines opening up, and one of those is with, you know, a lot of people going under and just, you know, waiting for the earth to finish its healing process or or, or all the nuclear stuff to be cleaned up to where it's functional again. Well, it felt metallic, so I kind of leaned toward. Oh, excuse me. I kind of leaned towards the ship. So, yeah. you know. Hopefully. And yeah, maybe I'll be able to get back there on another dream and, uh, or quest whatever you want to call it i it was one of those was a little too real to be a dream i uh, yeah that's what i was telling i was telling tom that i personally don't think it was a dream because you might have bilocated or gone out of body to that experience yeah that, that's exactly what i'm thinking just because he had to get dressed and in my dreams i'm never able to read anything at all mm-hmm. um so 
that was, that was the other one. Yeah, it sounds it's getting real interesting right now. I know a lot of the kids right now are coming forward and uh, you know fully awakened. Oh, speaking of, I, I got a story for you, James. Um, so I'm not gonna mention who this little girl is, but I asked a, a little girl, um, "Do you remember your past life?" And she goes, "Yeah." And I said to her, um, "Do you remember who?" who you were or your name and she goes no i don't remember my name but i remember my face so i'm thinking like maybe she misunderstood me and then she said i had a rainbow body james when that little girl said that i had to compose myself really quickly because i didn't want her to get scared and she's uh five years old and i was like wow and then she she goes on to tell me that it was her first time here Mm -hmm. and then when it just ran out, I was about to ask her what her mission was. Uh, her mom came and she just shut down right away. Oh yeah, yeah, that's too bad. I've I've seen that too. I've I've seen these little kids with lights coming out of their eyes and they're just wide open. And and a couple times they've actually pulled their hand out of their mother's and came running up to me and gave me a big hug. And uh, their mother was all embarrassed. You know, what are you doing? What are you doing? And and I just looked at their mother and I said, Do you have any idea who you're? child is here you know and, and they said they they just looked at me kind of funny like and i go she's an amazing being i said just keep her open and listen to her and i said she has stories to tell and don't don't doubt her when she's telling you things but uh i said whatever you do don't shut her down or don't allow her to be shut down yeah yeah because uh, the programs to shut these kids down are really uh ramping up oh yeah it's on every level. It's in the food. It's in the water. You know, it's in the airwaves. Um, every every possible way they can to, to try to close down the consciousness and this this huge quantum leap we're in. You know, they're doing, but it's it's for naught. There's no way you can stop this process. Yeah, it's the proverbial double-edged sword because the more they strike out and lash out against those that are waking up, the more people are witness to it and actually begin the process themselves. Yeah, yeah. I, I think a, a major, speaking of a major blow, is it's that video that, um, who put that, I think Sun put it up the first time I saw it, was the one where the guy, um, they they get arrested for dancing in the memorial. Um, yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. Did you see that, Tom? Yeah, I yeah. just my jaw dropped. I was like, "What? What?" And he's not even a good dancer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and they weren't even talking. They weren't even speaking or anything. They're just like, no dance. Yeah, and the guy kept his hands up the whole time, and he still body slammed him on yeah. the floor. So he, I, I gotta commend him because I don't know if I would be able to stay calm, but he stood calm the whole time with his hands up. So the cop really had no, no justification for, for what he did, but. No. Well, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out when did we pass a law that said there's no dancing at the Jefferson Memorial? But what is dancing? I mean, <laughs> What? He was he was on Ruder and he was like exactly what it, what is dancing is that just moving rhythmically because then he was then I'm not guilty because I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying that on Ruder. Oh, it was hilarious. I, 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 mean, I mean they weren't like break dancing or spinning or doing everything else. They were just like shuffling around, walking around yeah. in circles, you know, doing doing nothing basically, and I. You know, I, we're just seeing that over and over. I think they're just bringing attention to how brutal and and tyrannical that the system has gotten and how just nonsensical it's become. And, and anybody who who challenges it, I had a long talk with Maxine about that and and the system and how it works. And And basically the system is there to support itself and perpetuate itself. It's it's not for the people, and the only way the system can do that is through force, and and that's all it knows. And so anybody that challenges the system, uh, all the system knows how to do is is 
penalize or use force or lash out. Or, yeah. uh, you know, it it doesn't know any other way to act. And, and people that have been absorbed by the system that are that are part of that program, they don't know how. They don't know any other way to act. You know, they could just stand there and let the people dance. You know, and so what? You know, maybe they could dance along with them or or do anything else. You know, but they always choose the option of using force and and try to make an example of people or anybody that's going to do anything outside the norm or uh you know they they're going to come in and do all they can to to make an example of that person or or something of that nature and it's it's really a messed up society that we've created yeah for for those of you who doubt that that the ma- major media is is not covering anything um the, who was it? Was it NBC or Fox News that was there filming it? And Whit Reuter was also there filming it. Mm-hmm. And and the police kicked the the media out, yet they never mentioned any of that on the news. And Reuter, of course, even showed them, showed, showed the, I think it was NBC cameraman on there. So it was like proof that they were there, but yet you never mm-hmm. heard anything about it. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't if it wasn't for YouTube, I don't know. I wouldn't know anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, there's there's a major effort now to censor almost everything and I I've never seen anything like it. And they're you know, they're going after all the whistleblowers with just brutal force right now. And and you know, so much for a transparent government and, and everything else. <laughs> it's gotten even more tyrannical. Uh you know, and anybody, and you know, they're passing laws now that if you say anything against, you know, the ruling elite right now or or the system is that they can come in and just totally uh, take you out, basically shut you down, shut your your email down, your your uh, you know your radio shows, your Skype, everything. It's just I'm unbelievable where they've taken this to. I'm wa- I'm waiting for some high profile politician or military guy or somebody to to get a clue and wake up and 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 stand on his own two feet you know mm-hmm. there's, there's got to be got to be somebody that breaks that that those bonds soon well but bob bob uh, was saying i don't know if you got to listen to the show james but uh, bob dean was saying that he's expecting somebody soon to do that i, uh-huh. I guess he he might know something or somebody might yeah. have told him something but, um, oh, so, so some major player is going to blow the lid off the UFO. Yeah. Or something or. Yeah, he was expecting some very high-ranking person. Uh huh. Um. Yeah, that we need to, we, you know, we need the the people that, you know, what do they call them, the oath keepers and things like that. We need the people that have sworn to serve the people and protect the Constitution and and uh, some really high-ranking people to come forward now and just say, you know, enough's enough and. Uh, you know, we want to go back to a republic, which is what we were created to be, and uh, you know, where everybody is king in their own country, and and with the base uh, rights given to us in the Constitution, and just toss out all the rest of this nonsense they've been doing. Yeah, but I mean, it's not only the United States; it's like the entire planet. Because oh, it is. Yeah, because here we don't have the uh, violence, but the the. I don't know anything attitude is, is so, <laughs> it's so up there. Like, you know, everything's okay. Um, there's nothing going on and everybody's like, okay, no problem. Well, Ramon, you know, I think we are the heaviest, uh, we are, we are the heaviest dosed population or country with fluoride in the world, I believe. Yeah, and, you are. And if you take the, the, uh, you know, look at the stuff from World War II. Their reasoning for putting the fluoride in the the concentration camp uh, water was to pacify the population. So, I mean, you know, I think that had that has to have some kind of effect on people here, and creating that uh, that uh, oh, I don't know, that apathy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's more than than just the fluoride. Is that all of these heavy metals have the same effect, and and so you've got, um, you know, you've got the aluminum oxide, you know, the barium, 
you know, the chemtrails, the strontium, right. all those heavy metals actually dumb people down and, and just make you into that, like zombies, basically. That's what they would like, just a nice little working zombies, you know, to, to do their thing. And and it seems to be getting there with, with all the uh, additives and the food and the, you know, it's just going on and on. But uh, that's that's why we have to really start detoxing these heavy metals out of our system so we can start thinking clearly and, and making clear decisions because now – I, I call it stupidity. Uh, what I've been seeing <laughs> is, is beyond stupidity. It's stupidity. And, uh, That's a good one. Yeah. I'm going to start using that one. Yeah. It, and it's just it's just never ending. And, and there's just no common sense or base, base uh, heart, you know, heart thinking, you might say. It's, it's, uh, it's gone. You know, it's like. Yeah, you, know, you ask people, say, do you, okay, how would you like that being done to you? And they, they, they can't even go there. You just think about this. You know, the golden rule, do unto others as you have them do unto you. How would you like that to be done to you? You know, how would you like people to add poison into your water? How would you like to have people add poison into your food? How would you like, you know, if you had a really beautiful ocean you lived off of and caught fish out of, how would you like somebody to come over and just dump oil in it, you know, and, and, and then follow it up with some pretty nasty core exit, you know, to disperse it. Uh, you know, we've lost that base consciousness, you know, the, the old native American teachings, the Cherokee teachings are, is that if it isn't good for everyone, it isn't good. And, and we need to get back to that, that base thinking is, is okay. What am I doing to humanity earth how is this going to affect you know other god's creatures whatever you want to call it you know how you know am am i an asset to this planet and humanity or am i am i just raping it and poisoning it and and uh and these are the big questions everybody's going to have to start asking themselves so uh, you know there there is one camp that sees all this crap going on in the world as a, as sort of a necessary evil to actually wake people up and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I can see that to a certain extent. I think it's gone over the top a little far. Uh, but, you know, I can see some of it to a certain extent as in there are people out there that I know for a fact will not ask the right questions will, from inside without mm-hmm. having to go through that trauma or some form of trauma. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's that, you know, what what I've seen is people are, you know, basically they're voting their paycheck. Uh they're going to do whatever they're told, you know, and and they they're running that program of material acquisition and outer appearances and and uh you know, this is what I need to maintain my position and my self-esteem, you know, and 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 they're just running that program and they're not going to stop at that program until there's no no program left, which is what's happening right now. That, that old program of, you know, me first and, and what's in it for me and, and, uh, you know, what can I get out of everyone and everything on this planet, you know, and, and how much of it can I get? And especially the tyranny frequency, all of that stuff is imploding. It's, it's non, it's not sustainable and it's, it's getting ready to completely implode on itself. So those who are playing that game, are going to have a very rude awakening here. And I would say, you know, before, before November, you were going to see a, a very, a very rude reality check coming in. Speaking of, of November, um, isn't that when they're doing the, um, I don't know who's doing that anymore. The, doing the huge meditation yeah, on 11, the, 11, uh, yeah. 11, 11, 11. Yeah. Who, who's, who's doing that now? Because I know um, you interviewed them uh, a while back. Yeah. Uh, God, total mental block. It'll come to me. Let me think about <laughs> it. Uh, Kelly, is it? Uh, no, Shelly. Shelly Yates. Yeah, is she still doing that? As it- far as I know, the last time I heard, I told her we need we need to fire the grid much earlier than that. You know, we need a lot more a uh, lot more work on the grid. You know, before eleven eleven. But, yeah. 
Yeah, because there's things coming in, you know, not you guys have probably been keeping up on that comet Elenin. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's definitely not what they're saying it is. And it makes no sense whatsoever. Anybody that does a research on it, you know, every major quake that we've experienced and even volcanic eruptions, everything, when there's and there's an alignment between the earth and the sun and Elenin and there's other alignments, uh the earth gets extremely perturbed and starts going through all these changes, you know, crazy weather, uh, earth changes, all that stuff, you know, earthquakes, the whole nine yards. So, you know, something's active there and, Mm -hmm. and they need to start, you know, paying attention to this thing because, you know, a little comet couldn't do that. And a lot of the astronomers that are, are, uh, are out there saying, Hey, I want a picture. Give me a picture of this thing. You know, they don't, uh, they're not giving them a picture of it. And so they're trying to see it. They're getting the coordinates of it. They're trying to see it and they're not getting a picture either. And so they're saying, Hey, nothing's there that we can see with our telescopes. Therefore it must be something that is in the infrared, like a a brown dwarf or, or something, you know, very big. And, uh, that, that's not putting off light because that's the only reason why it would be perturbing, you know, the the earth so much and the other planets as well. Mm. So they know something really big is coming in. Something is perturbing the earth and all the other planets. And, and it is happening exactly when these alignments are coming up. So, so it's time to, to really do some research into this column, this, uh, comet Elenin. And I don't think it's a comet at all. It, it's just it's having too much of an impact already and it hasn't even entered our solar system i think it comes in our solar system in june uh i don't have the exact dates but i know in june there's a major event uh in you know july and august there's alignments that happen but the the really big event is in september when this object goes between us and the sun and loops around and then uh October 28th, which is the end of the Mayan calendar, according to Carl Kalaman, uh, uh, that is the date that he came up with and a lot of other researchers came up with. It's, it's not 1212. It's actually 2011, and October 28th is the ending of the calendar. And it just so happens that that this object, we go through the tail of this object at exactly, you know, October 28th. Hmm. So, you know, it, it's kind of interesting how all these things are coming together and lining up. And and uh, I think any way you look at it, we are moving into a highly energized place in space. Uh, you know, and the Russian scientists have been talking about this for a long time. We're going into a huge energy cloud right now. Uh, we're getting bombarded with over 500 hits a day of plasma streams and, and energies from unknown sources that they've never seen before used to be about 50 and and you know you put all this together uh you know it's it's a pretty much undeniable and then you know you have the solar cycle 24 which the sun is ramping up with pro mass ejections and flares but add all this together and there i don't see any way possible it could be business as usual you know as we move in towards the end of this year yeah you know, i think of our our physiology is actually changing i mean i i feel different you know if i look at myself now and look at myself even you know six months ago i feel different yeah Yeah, i agree there um i don't know if you ever had a because i know you don't watch any tv james but Mm -hmm. i don't know if you ever watched that tv program um the event no i haven't um the last the ending of the season is that um these these aliens want to they brought their planet into into our solar system and it started um causing all sorts of problems on the planet so they were like earthquakes but they couldn't find where the earthquakes were coming from and and uh winds and stuff like that and they you know the majority of people didn't have and then all of a sudden they see in their sky a planet uh-huh. um so I'm just wondering how much, because I know they're they're giving us some truth in that TV program, but I know they they're putting a lot of crap around it. So you you constantly stay confused. 
Yeah, that's so. how they that's how they work. They'll use a lot of truth in an event, and then then they interject what they want or where they want to steer it. Yeah. And, and I've seen that over and over again. Well, they use a lot of information that's very accurate information, but they always twist it in a direction they want it to go. Yeah. Um, the other thing was that me and um, Tom, I, I recently was going to, to Skype, and I was adding my mom's cell phone onto there, and I was changing the country code, and all of a sudden I see Antarctica. I was like, Antarctica has a country code? And yes, it really does. So we were tra- we were trying to find a number to the telescope to call to see oh, yeah. it, just like a surprise interview, <laughs> but we couldn't find a number to the uh, the was it called Tom the? Uh, geez, I can't remember. I think it's South Pole Telescope or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I think that isn't the Vatican behind that one, or I'm not sure who's funding that one. I think that's the U.S. I wouldn't government. Be surprised. I think that one's the U.S. government. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they have one in Arizona they're funding, and uh, they went into a preserve and just dropped all the the environmental laws, everything to do it, and just put up this massive telescope and suppose that they're looking for is warm that, wood. Is that the one they named Lucifer? I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know. I don't know what they named it. They named a telescope Lucifer? Yeah, I saw something about it here last year. I think I thought it was that one, but... I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, that's a funny... It wouldn't surprise me, though. <laughs> I think Lucifer, Lucifer means the light bringer or something, right. doesn't it? Or, yep. So that that kind of would fit with a telescope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. Somehow. True. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty, it's pretty crazy. I, I don't know. They There's so many, uh, you know... You know, it, it's, I hate to get into that area, but as far as the Satan worshiping and the doing the dark ceremony and bringing in these demonic gods, you know, and beings, I mean, that is going on on a pretty big scale on the highest levels. And, and I think that's all starting to come up and be exposed. Yeah. Um, I was listening to the interview with, um, uh, you had him on the other day. Uh, what's this? Michael, is it? Michael Tellinger? No, not Michael Tellinger. Um, he, he's, ah, oh, what's his name? Cavasilis. George Cavasilis. George, I don't know where I got Michael from. Yes, George Cavasilis. Um, uh, James, are you still there? Oh, looks like we lost James. Oh, uh, James started talking. Okay, well, let's see if we can get him back here. I was just about to say, what did you say, James? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. For some reason, every time, uh, let me unpause this. Resume recording. All right, we got James back. Uh, we lost you for a little bit. So, I guess uh, you said some magic words there that uh, someone didn't like and just clipped you. <laughs> Yeah, that that goes on on a regular basis, it seems like. You know, you start going down that road and all of a sudden your phone hangs up, you know. And, and uh, one time I had, uh, I was doing an interview in L.A. and they said I had the record for, for hang-ups that they've ever seen before. And, and they, they were hung up on six times. And they rerouted things through different lines, different, and they said whoever was doing it, Hung up, <laughs> hung their lines up six different times. Wow. wow. Mm. Oh, so they were able to tell that it was a hang up. Yeah, yeah. It's like they were cut off. Well, I guess like all the- all we had to do was mention the dark side, didn't we? The the dark ritualistic end of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, people like us, uh, you, James, and and the the East City Ranch and organizations like that are the counterbalance to that uh, nefarious deeds going on. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just a matter of time. They're not going to have too much longer because, you know, as I said, what's happening right now is that if you're not frequency specific to this evolutionary process that we're undergoing, you know, with the Earth and humanity, 
uh, you're you're just not going to make it. And I don't care what kind of an underground bunk you have and how much food you have and you know it, and how much technology you have. It doesn't matter because the Earth is shifting. She's evolving, moving to the next level. So we have to go with it. And you know these other guys that are playing out these other scenarios are going to have a very rude awakening. You know when when something very powerful steps into their party, you know, on a, on a, on a much higher level. And that seems to be happening that their, their rituals aren't really working anymore. And the other beings are negating it. And, and it's just a matter of time before that energy and that consciousness is, is no longer the earth just won't accept anymore. It won't allow it to be here. Yeah. I mean, on, on our part, there's, um, a lot of people who who are raising up their vibration, and I always hear that 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 really helps the um, the earth. Definitely. So, um, okay. Michael, um, when we we were talking to Michael, and you were talking to Michael too, uh, Tellinger. This time I'm talking about Michael Tellinger, and about the gold, and you know this this ferocity over gold, and everybody wants gold, and do you think that? Because I, I, I'm, I'm getting the, the feeling that they use the gold somehow um, to amp up their their vibrations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, monatomic gold. Uh, yeah, I, and also too, you know, you, you think about any civilization that has been breathing gold dust for as long as they have has got to be a pretty advanced civilization. So these Anunnaki beings or whatever. Uh, you know, got to be pretty advanced after after doing that. You know, so it's definitely gold has a lot to do with with raising and maintaining a frequency. Mm. So I'm just I'm just wondering if these dark elites are, are um, because now everybody's like sell your gold. Like you see those commercials. Um, yeah. Well, they're trying to collect it from the populace. You know, without having to do the thing they did. It, uh, uh, and before the depression, you know, make yeah. gold illegal. Uh-huh. Right. So James, we, you know, we changed the name of our show to the hundredth monkey radio. Uh-huh. Uh, and I know you're familiar with the hundredth monkey theory. Uh, yes. what do you think about that as far as our consciousness and, and, uh, all the people on this planet? Well, it's kind of interesting scenario unfolding and you know we were talking about that earlier how some people i don't think came in to be a part of this process they they just aren't going to get it this time around and and we have to realize that and and i i do believe in the hundredth monkey when enough people get it there's going to be a shift and everybody's going to get it we are moving into that process right now where enough people are getting it but i I still believe that there's free will and there are some people that just aren't going to get it. They're, they're going to go express somewhere else and, you know, finish their evolution somewhere else because the earth is, is ascending to the next level and, and because of misuse of their will and choosing to continue, you know, in a very base consciousness that's harmful to humanity and the earth, that there, there are a lot of people that just aren't going to get it. Yeah, that's kind of the way I see it too. Uh, there's a lot of people that won't be able to get over, uh, the deeds that they've done just in this lifetime and won't be able to mm-hmm. forgive themselves enough to be able to, uh, pro- to, uh, grow. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that just believe they're a personality in a body. That's all they think they are and that's all they care about. And they're totally running on their, you know, ego and, and stimulus, you know, through outer experiences and, and, uh, you know, a lot of those people are, are going to have a very rude awakening because their world, uh, the world of the beast, whatever you want to call it, is is imploding right now. And so if they work for the beast or they're part of this process, they're going to have a real hard time, uh, you know, making it through these shifts, you know, just because they've chosen not to, basically. Yeah. Right. Uh, one thing I, I've noticed for some people may say, like, um, Okay, there's really nothing happening. There's no evolution. That's just the New Agers, you know, uh, sprinkling fairy dust, whatever. But what I keep noticing, I keep seeing videos of animals, forget about humans, but animals doing these, 
things that are just so compassionate. For example, um, the one where the, uh, I think it was a panther had killed a monkey and then there was the baby and right. he like took it up on the tree and was hugging it. Or the, or the one with the cat taking care of the baby squirrel. Mm-hmm. Or there's another video where the, the, there's a kitten and a cat sleeping together and the kitten's having like a nightmare and the mama cat just like kind of hugged it and it just calmed down. Yeah. So I keep seeing, or the other one with the dog saving the other dog. Like the animals are just really coming. I feel like they're, they're really stepping up their game. Well, they're, yeah. they're, they're being affected by this energy that we're moving into also. Yeah, they seem to be, uh, uh, kind of outshining the humans right now. You know, but, uh, you know, there's, there's some major events I've seen, you know, with all of these. There's a lot of different ways of looking at it, but like in Egypt and Tunisia and all these other places, uh, where they're calling out for freedom again, you know, and, and basic civil rights and things of that nature. I think that's part of this, this huge shift that's going on. And, uh, and though there are other people trying to redirect that energy or, or, you know, want to capitalize on the chaos and instill, you know, uh, or install their puppets, you know, after the process. You know, they need to keep an eye on, it, on, that, on that scenario as well. But overall, I would say it's a good thing. And, and I'm just seeing over and over is that these dictators and tyranny is just, it's over. You know, it's not going to function. And, and you look at England now, they're shutting down all the banks there in England and they're, they're doing protests and, and, uh, they're fed up with the banksters and what they've been up to. And, and, uh, you know, they're, they're not too happy with the queen either, you know, so. Or oh, the, the, the thing that happened in Iceland where, um, they, uh, actually they gave them a vote whether to bail out the banks and the people said no. And then the prime minister, she, um, she told him, be careful because, you know, like she actually gave a warning to, to the population, like, we're going to get a backlash from, from not, you know, backing up the banks. Mm-hmm. And people still voted anyway against it. Yeah, and I noticed too is what they did, a lot of the countries, they went in and they got rid of, of the, uh, international banksters and said, wait a second, you know, are, are there federal reserves that they have there, whatever their, their, you know, arm is, and they started printing their own money and created state banks or, and, uh, you know, and they got rid of all the interest and all the other, you know, problems that come with giving your power away to some other, other program. And now they're flourishing and, and they're investing back into the community and people are getting loans and, and, and they're, they're flourishing right now. And what's happening right now is we can't even pay the interest back. On, on all these insane, you know, situations we, we put into motion here and we keep borrowing like billions of money from the feds and at interest and things like that. We need to, you know, like Ron Paul and a lot of these other politicians are, they're, they're saying we need to get rid of the feds, you know, completely and, and start just working, you know, on our own system, print our own money. A lot of states are starting to move in that direction where, you know, they're allowing silver to be you know, part of the mainstay, uh, uh, economic system. And, and there's, you know, a lot of them are looking at printing their own state. Who was the state that actually, um, passed it or North was Dakota? Idaho. Oh, North Dakota. North yeah. Dakota. They, they created their own state bank. Yeah. And, and they have, they're the, like the only, con- the only state in the country that had like a $700 million surplus last year. Oh. Yeah. They're, they're totally flourishing, you know, because because of that. They created their own state bank. Other countries are doing that, too, as well. And, you know, it's just we've got to get rid of this manufactured lack program and, and just this pure greed that's running things because there's enough for everybody to live abundantly. Mm, and, yeah. and what you got to do is just get get rid of the, the status quo and, and the system the way it is and revamp it. And, and, you know, you start going back to heaven on earth again. Yeah. Speaking of abundance, um, I don't know if a lot of people know, but you're also a full-time farmer besides all the other things you do. Um, how's that, um, 
flourishing over there? You know, it's really good. We've got, you know, we've got the yaks. We're raising yaks now, and we have some really big gardens that we've put in. So you've been uh, yakking off? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that going on. But, uh, yeah, we got, we actually, we just came in. I just came in from working on the fences and extending their fields out and put them in another area, and then I have another big field that we just, we're almost complete fencing off, so. Yeah, how uh, many yaks do you have now? Well, we've got five, and and hopefully a couple, you know, might be coming here not too far away, you know, if our bull does what he's supposed to be doing. <laughs> mm. <laughs> might have to some some movies or something. Or <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, maybe go my bottle of wine. Yeah. Put him in the get, get, Yeah, get him. Uh, Get him a couple, you know, things of roses and a couple bottles of wine. Pump some Jump soft music out there. and yeah, There you go. <laughs> or get some real bass music, you know. So get some disco music going out there. And yeah. Right. Put some little wine in the water. <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll get one of those, those date white. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I saw some of the video of it. It's looking really, really great. Um Oh yeah. So, what's what's some of the advice you, you would give to people who um, have a little bit of land? Because you've been doing this for what twenty five years now with the yes. Uh -huh. um, what's some of the advice like if they have like a small little piece of land? Yeah, you know, my my advice to people now is to uh, really get the basics down. Uh, get your seeds. You know, get your water source down, uh, get some fresh water, however that is, through a well or, or find a really good spring or something. And uh, and also get off the coast, you know, get up to some high ground because there's going to be a lot of movement coming on. And, you know, I always see there's three scenarios playing out. There's divine intervention, which includes the ultra-dimensionals and the UFOs and the other stuff as well as the angelic and god, god beings and things of that nature and, and masters. You know, that's coming into play big time right now. And then we have the uh, earth process, you know, and she's going to do what she needs to do to heal and cleanse so she can continue to be the platform for life. And then, you you know, you've got the New World Order boys doing their thing, which they would like to all see us be mindless little zombies, you know, as a workforce reduced to about, you know, I don't know, 80, they want something like 80 percent of the population gone. You know, so so you've got these three scenarios being played out, and and you kind of don't know where it's going to go because that's free will, and a lot of people are making choices. But as we were talking earlier, all it's going to take is a few people in high levels of position to come out and talk about what's going on, and you know it's going to be over for the for the you know the dark hearts, you might say, and and that's happening everywhere. Yeah, right, I, right I, now. I um. I recently watched that video on uh, Project Avalon. Um, what was her name, Tom? Inela. In yeah. Did you watch that, James? Yes, I watched one of them. Um, what do you think? What do you think about her? Because she was saying that um, we're 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 not completely out, but we're doing pretty well compared to what was expected. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh... You know, it's it's kind of interesting. We are we are pulling through these changes pretty good, and I'm I'm really hoping we get some major divine intervention. Uh, but at the same time, I'm I'm seeing a lot of people just now starting to wake up, and and as Tom was talking about the energies we've been feeling, uh, when the third day opened up, I, th I think it was the following day after. There was such an influx of energy. It just laid people out. I mean, it, and we were so blissed out. We couldn't even do anything here. Being on a vortex, you know, we get the double amp, you know, of the energy when it comes in. So so I've just seen huge shifts of energy. And the WESAC, you know, that I went and spoke at the WESAC Festival. And, and that one, too, had a major event, you know, happen because you could really feel the energy. So, I mean, there's times I walk around here and we can't even function almost. We're so blissed out. There's so much energy coming in. 
uh, you know, and it's got to be happening around the planet. So, so I'm really, I'm really hoping that there's a lot more of this and a lot more people get together and get behind this and a lot more people stand up and stand, you know, stand their ground and just say, Hey, you know, enough's enough. Uh, I'm not going to participate in any actions that are harmful to humanity and the earth anymore. And I don't care if it means, you know, I lose my condo and, and can't watch, you know, the football games on Sunday, you know, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, pound down the beers, you know, it's like, I'm just not going to do this anymore. Yeah. They, um, uh, oh, when was it? Like maybe like a couple of weeks back, uh, John D. Riley was up here in mm-hmm. Japan and, uh, he brought one of his live stream machines. And, mm-hmm. um, there's a gentleman from Iceland. His name is, uh, Gundi and he runs like this, um, temple kind of thing and people gather there and meditate. And I was in such a shock. It was such a, a, a culture shock to see all these Japanese people hugging and talking to each other and meditating and I was like wow it was just it was such a a good vibration and and I was like okay we are going to be okay. it just gave me the feeling of we're going to be okay because mm-hmm. it, it's starting to pop up everywhere around the world it's just not like one section mm-hmm. yeah definitely and, and I, I know there's a lot of help coming to Japan and I know where some of it's coming from but, uh, you know, one of the scientists I work with who created the crystallized oxygen, uh, that totally gets rid of any heavy metals and even negates the radiation. So a lot of that's starting to get over there to Japan. Yeah. yeah. Do, there's, do, you, there's, do you know how we can get get that? You know, I don't know. It's it's like I might not, probably shouldn't even be talking about it right now. But uh, <laughs> it, it's all being set up through the government they're bringing this in really yeah and there are other technologies coming in there too and i know another guy that just developed a device that you hold on to these two rods and it totally through frequency negates the radiation so so there's uh you know a couple things that are coming through there uh that that are just being made available right now and they're in you know they're in the works they're being negotiated right now so uh, that's just a couple things that I know about, so I can imagine what else is going on, not to mention, you know, we've been doing live stream uh, meditations, healing meditations for Japan and asking for assistance, you know, with the higher beings to come in and and totally, uh, 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 you know, open up the open up the gates there and just stream as much energy as possible to, to help people, you know, through these times. Yeah, Khan Khan's actually been doing a lot of extra workshops. Oh, uh, great! Yeah, he's been doing a lot of workshops. Um, I I guess he's feeling the same thing too. Like he's just been amping up his game. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, when he was here, uh, we were talking about. And I, I asked him. I said, "You sure you don't want to stay here?" Because <laughs> you know, I said Japan's going to have some very big challenges coming up and a lot of earth changes. And and he knew. He said, "Yeah, I know." I know I need to be there to help out, and and uh, we also helped in that fundraising thing, so he could get back to Japan and and try to find his family, which he did, which is amazing. Yeah, because I guess his whole family, that whole village he was in, was pretty much. Uh, I believe I believe he's from Miyagi Prefecture. I could be wrong, but um, I believe that's where he's from. Yeah, that that was that was amazing in itself for him to to find his family. Yeah, they just happened to not be home at the right time, which was great. Yeah, which, speaking of, um, I've been finding that the, once you, you start walking this road, you start being at places where you should be or where you shouldn't be. Yeah, exactly. Like, you you won't go to the job when you're supposed to or you won't, you know, mm-hmm. meet a friend when you were supposed to. Something just keeps happening to stop you. Yeah, we've, we've been talking a lot about that. The, uh, um, I, you know, I was sharing an example that happened, that happened with me. The, uh, I had a, an opportunity to go to, uh, India. And, uh, you know, and one of this Yogi Shanti was, was one of them who was setting it up. 
and they were extremely interested in these golden ships, you know, and the, you know, the, the connections with these ships. And, and in reverse speech, when this big gold ship came over, I said, I don't know who's on those golden ships, but they feel like godlike beings, you know, very ancient beings. And when they reverse speech that, I said, you know, came out, uh, Sailor Vishnu is his name, which is the god of preservation. So it's in all of their ancient scriptures and the Vedic scriptures. They talk about, they talk about these, these, uh, ships, you know, the Vimanas and things like that. And so they wanted me to come to India and, and meet with some very powerful people. One, they said, was the prime minister and some other people. And, you know, they were setting that up. And so I went into meditation about it. And I kept coming. Babaji kept coming in and says, nope, you're not going. And I went, damn, you know, I said, I really want to go to India. You know, I would love to go there. And I've never been to India before. And and it's all set up. And he goes, nope, you're not going, you know. And so I kept saying, you know. God, the Kumbh Mela, you know, the major event is happening there. I go, I, you know, I said, this is perfect, you know, perfect timing. And, you know, I meditate again. Nope, you're not going. You know? <laughs> so, so it turns out I would have landed right in the middle of that massive earthquake that they had, you know, right at ground zero if I would have gone. Yeah. And so I, I missed that one. And, and the latest one was quite interesting, too. There's another one where, where I was asked, to go and lead a group to the pyramids and it was all paid it was set up you know by another group another organization and and all i had to do is is show up you know and be there as as kind of a, i hate to say the word celebrity status or whatever but uh, <laughs> but, uh apparently you know, i don't some people like to follow i don't know why but uh but anyway, they were, they set that thing up. Same thing. I was meditating and Kazekiel came in and said, nope, you're not going, you know, and I said, damn, you know, I really want to go to the pyramids. You know, it's on my bucket list, you know, <laughs> so, so, uh, same thing. Nope, you're not going, you know, and so I called him up and I said, no, it's, you know, thanks for the offer, but I can't do it. You know, I'm just my inner guidance is saying, no, not going. And I would have been right smack in the middle of the, uh, of the mess there, you know, and the riots and everything else. But, uh, what was really interesting too is that the, um, uh, the event there, I know, and I don't know if he went with the same group or he had his own group, but William Henry went at the same time. And, uh, they got, they got caught in the hotel. They couldn't get out of the hotel. Uh, I mean, it was just crazy. And they had a wild bus ride and they were like, you know, flipping out and trying to get get back to the airport just as they could get out and the planes weren't flying it was just a nightmare yeah you know, but they all got through it and, and got out thank god but but uh i i thought it's just really interesting how how if you do listen to your inner guidance you know even though your ego has all these desires and demands and wants to do this and wants to do that if you follow that inner guidance that, you know, everything always works out and, and you are, you're where you're supposed to be. And sometimes you miss a lot of those, those, uh, let's say unhealthy situations that would have unfolded. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely experienced that a lot. Yeah, um, so, uh, well, we're actually nearing the, the top of the hour here, Ramon. Uh, James, you good for another hour? Uh, I tell you, I'll make a deal. I'm, I'm good till the tacos come. <laughs> okay, that okay. sounds good. So, so good. we'll hurry up and talk. Yeah, yeah um, we've got some. We've got a uh, uh, an order in at the local <laughs> country, and so so okay. anyway, they're, tonight's taco night because we all just worked our tails off all weekend here on the ranch. We had a huge group here and a lot of people here, and I, I had to do. Five or six counselings a day, and and all of us are just wiped out. So we ordered out for tacos, and I don't know. They should be here in the next thirty minutes or so. Okay, so uh, tell us what's going on for you this year. Oh, there's a lot of things going on. We've got the the one conference coming up on the twenty fourth with uh, Bob Dean and and Tellinger and and uh, Neil uh, Kramer. Yeah, Neil Kramer and and just amazing lineup. I'll be speaking. Uh, Jenny Lamb will be there. Uh, you know. Yeah, we have we have her coming up uh, next week. Yeah. Is that correct? Oh, okay. Yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I just did an interview with her too, and it was a very good one because she talked a lot about 
possession and entities, uh, you know, people making deals and connections and a lot of teachers out there are actually allowing these entities to work through them, you know, because they aren't maintaining their integrity. And it was a pretty amazing show, but, wow. you know, it was, it was, it was uh, she really covered, she said that's where her work is moving into. Her healing work is getting the entities off of people. Is that your World Puja show this week? Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know, Nate. <laughs> Nate. <laughs> probably is. I think it is a, one of the World Puja shows. You know, people okay. There. So you're on on Saturdays on BBS at, mm-hmm. I always get confused with eight the o'clock. time. Yeah, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Pacific. And then World Puja on Tuesdays. Yeah. And Tuesdays, I think it starts at 2, and then you can listen to the first one all day. And then I'm not sure how long they let you listen to the first show, but once it goes in the archives, you have to join. But um, both shows, yeah, both shows are free for the first time listener when it airs. And then when the, when it, they go off into the archives, then you have to pay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've, uh, anything else, Tom? Uh, condemnation without investigation is a height of ignorance. And uh, I want to thank and- everybody for joining us tonight. And uh, we're going to pop over to the archives and finish this up. And actually, uh, yeah, uh, I was just about to correct you to this directly before Brooks show. So uh, I want you to hang around and listen to Brooks's show and then pop over to our archives. Uh, Brooks has always got some good stuff. So uh, that's about it, Ramon. Yeah. And uh, once again, I want to give a big thanks to uh, Brooks. Um, and it's funny how, uh, Without even planning it, we got pushed right behind Brooks. Yeah. And he was the one who helped us get on BBS. <laughs> Synchronicity. Well, I like being on the weekends better anyway, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just means I got to wake up an extra hour earlier to listen to the show. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll talk to you guys in the archives. All right. Night, night. Oh, welcome to the archives with uh, the the 100th Monkey and Tom and Ramon and James Gilliland. So, uh, where do we want to go here, Ramon? Um, I was going to ask him what's been going on at the um, at the ranch with the flyovers, anything. Yeah, it's it's been real busy. Uh, we had uh, a real large group that came to the ranch this weekend. And, uh, I mean, it, we were just packed. And they, the ships did come in. They put in quite a show. They've been coming in all week. And uh, they, the first night they were here was like, you know, it was okay. We saw, you know, a few ships, quite a few ships came in and nothing really spectacular. And then the second night, you know, they were here, uh, a lot more ships started coming in. And then last night, it was it was pretty nice. There was... Uh, Quite a few ships with a, a real nice power up that came right over the house and lit up, and just everybody got really excited over that. So, so we're just now getting into the season, you know, where people are out watching, you know, and sky watching because the weather's been so bad, you know, up here. But now we're getting some clear skies and warmer weather, and and a lot of people out, and and the ships are still here and they're they're doing their thing. So how's the weather been over there? Oh, it's it's been pretty clear lately. We had just torrential rain. We didn't think it was ever going to quit. 
and and now we're having uh, some real clear days, and then kind of spotty, and you know, a little bit of rain will come through, and then you know, a couple hours later, it's clear again. Yeah, I and, guess it's, and the, so the clouds are all stopping at the mountains then, because this side of the mountains has been nasty. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, we're on the opposite. You know, we're in the rain shadow with Mount Adams, and so we're on the opposite side, and and uh, you know, we can see it backed up there, and. That, you know, it's funny, one of the women that was here, she was all bummed out because it was raining when they got in. They go, I guess that's it for the Skywatch tonight. And I said, no, it'll be clear. And she goes, what do you mean? And she, and I, I go, it'll be clear. And she goes, it's totally pouring rain right now. And I said, don't worry about it. It'll be clear. And uh, and she goes, well, she goes, it, it's not looking good. And I said, it doesn't matter. I said, we'll clear it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, you, you want to hear something talking about coincidence? Um, so I had a dream. I told you about this dream, Tom, two nights ago, not last night, but the night before. And I was at the ranch with you and, and it was cloudy and you're like, oh, it's cloudy. And I said, oh, James, let's clear it up. Like we did last time. You're like, you, you didn't look excited about it. He's like, okay. And then I was like, look, James is cleared. The sun's coming out. But it was still like partially cloudy with the sun like breaking through. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's kind of like you know we do it all the time here, and it's a kind of, you know same thing when the ships come in. I don't get real excited about the ships, so so it's kind of a you know because we see them here all the time. You know, it's just common. It's a common thing here, but the. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people, you see people just jumping up and down and just going nuts, you know, when the ships come in. Yeah. But, uh, well, when you, know, you like, when you see them every day, they, they take <laughs> kind of the, the big excitement like that gets, uh, goes away. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see them. I mean, I'd love to see the ships and they're always validating, you know, the work we're doing here and it feels good. You know, and it's good to know you're not crazy, you know, when they, <laughs> they come on a regular basis. So, so I mean, I really do enjoy the interconnection with them as well, but it, it's just like jumping up and down and screaming and getting excited. Just It's, it's just kind of an everyday thing here now. Yeah. There, there's a few things that I just can't talk enough about because I've had a few experiences um, at the ranch and with you as well. Um, for example, the one time my uh, battery ran out and you was like, oh, let me let me try it. And you charged it, and then I was telling Son about it. Um, I know I must have said this story a hundred times, but and then I told Son about it, and Son was like, "Oh yeah, that's no big deal." And then um, I, I tried it myself, and then charged it. And that battery, that same battery that I was charging, I kept using it and charging it and recharging. It, I think to the point where I couldn't recharge it anymore. Um, and then I finally had to buy a new one, but that was six months later after it was, you know, dead. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah we did that. I did that. You know, it, it's really funny. This is an interesting topic, but I know Above Top Secret is finally getting nailed, you know, for a lot of the, you know, a sanitizing and the disinformation they've been putting out there. And, you know, we had them. Uh, here at the ranch for a while and they had such an amazing experience while they're here and you know the you know all the guys that with Bob Doc Seifert saw ships come over one guy threw the binoculars down he goes oh my god he goes it's a disc you know it's a disc and it freaked him out Robbie Williams was here uh, just so many ships came over it was insane you know there was way too many they had JPLs you know J tracker on above they had uh, heavens above on you know to make sure these weren't satellites and there was so much footage and then one of them actually received a major major heat while he was here and uh and then got the sound of the ships that appeared you know during the healing that we did process so so uh you know just phenomenal stuff happened but when they went and talked about it it was all sanitized and saying well they could have been ships they could have been satellites and, you know, nothing was talked about about the sound of the ships that they recorded or or the, the endless footage, you know, of the ships coming in. And it didn't match anything. You know, there were no known satellites or anything in the area when these things came in. So, uh, 
and then um, uh, what's the paranormal state was here too and we told them exactly when the ships would come in and where and they had their cameras rolling and, and they got some amazing footage but you know the above top secret guys were worried they go oh these guys aren't going to do it they're not going to they're not going to cover this, you know, and, and they're going to sanitize. Everything they said that the paranormal state people were going to do, they themselves did. Hmm. And and I thought that was amazing. And paranormal state put it out, you know, amazing footage, you know. And they if they said, hey, you did say 10 o'clock, and the ships are here at 10 o'clock, and they appeared exactly where you said they would. So their psychic chip coffee also got the same information, 10 o'clock in the east, that the ships were going to appear, and sure enough, they did. So, I mean, it's amazing with these guys, you know, after coming here and having all of this footage, you know, of the ships, the sound of the ships, experiencing healing, and everything else. When they got back to this to the office there, it it just all got sanitized, and it just was became very ambiguous and as if nothing nothing happened here. Uh, which was just amazing. And I saw them do that with the chemtrails, too, is totally get down on any chemtrail researcher and the people putting out the information on chemtrails saying there are no chemtrails, they don't exist. When there's a mountain of evidence, uh, the aerosol spraying programs uh, and the, you know, the, the climate engineering, you know, all of this stuff it is all there for anybody who wants to do the research. You know, so we've we've run into a lot of that, you know, with with people that that a lot of people think are, you know, the big boys or the mainstays in the UFO community or conspiracy community and things like that, and they're really not who they say they are. Yeah. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to mention, uh, not to go off topic, was the um, the uh, I don't know what kind of ship that was. Uh, let's just say. Plasma or ultra dimensional ship that was over the conference. Oh yeah, uh, last year. Last year, yeah, that was something else. I mean, I didn't see it, but the energy, I felt it, and I, I just, I can't get, you know, I can't talk enough about that. There had to have been what two hundred of us that saw that one. Oh yeah, yeah, and some of the, some of the people that were there, just the. Um, you know, the credentials there, they were like Lockheed engineers, Boeing engineers. Uh, John D. Riley, Brooks Agnos. Yeah, Brooks Agnos. William Henry. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm not sure if they were out there at the time, uh, but, you know, Dolores Cannon was at the event, Mary Rodwell, Lisa Renee. Um, you know, all those people were there along with 200 other witnesses, and I don't know how many cameras filmed it, but... You know, it was after an intention experiment where we put the intention out for the ships to come in and say hi, did a nice meditation, and sure enough, they did. You yeah. know, so how do you it, deny? How do you deny that experience when you put the intention out? You ask them to come, and they come right after the, <laughs> right after you ask for them to come, and you have all these witnesses, you know, plus film and photographs of it. There's, there's the, uh, oh, Mel was also there, Mel Fabregas. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other, the other part was, when was that, Tom, uh, Friday, when it was cloudy, and, uh. Oh, when we cleared we, the sky over the. Campfire. Yeah, we cleared the sky, and Mel's always talking about that one. Um, just with. Yeah. Pure intention. There was like a perfect circle opened up right over us. Yeah. You know, if people could just suspend their doubt. And suspend their their conditioning for a while, and uh, and look at what the kind of things that James is saying, and and so many other people are saying about the way uh, our consciousness affects our reality, uh, and actually try to put some of this stuff in practice. They would just be so floored, and and it it bring it from the uh, you know the doubt category into the knowing category. I just I just so love to see that. Yeah, it is. It, when you have, you know, I I keep hearing, like at the Palm Springs conference, and I brought it up, and um, Barbara Marks Hubbard was there, and she was saying, you know, I can't wait for them to show up to a group, 
she goes, they've never shown up to a group. And, and she goes, I'm waiting for that to happen so we can verify that that uh, they're here, they're real. And, you know, I told her, I said, you know, I said, we put out movies. We put out, you know, several, you know, Contact Has Begun, the the other, um, the latest one that we just put out, you know, with uh, the map makers and, you know, you know, with the radio shows and everything. And I said, I'm really curious why are people still in the mindset of when are they going to appear? When are they going to come? And, you know, they've been coming here for 25 years. And with all that evidence out, they've been coming to groups and multiple witnesses and multiple cameras and everything. And and you have to ask yourself, when are we going to drop that that mind that <laughs> mindset? You know, that when are they going to come? I mean, it, it's unbelievable. And I, I keep seeing people that are, are very high up, you know, in the in the system or whatever. Are, they keep pushing that program. When are they going to come? They they're here. They've always been here. They've been here for millions of years. And then they they're based here, and and now they are appearing to people with open minds and loving hearts that you know are matching the criteria. Well, those people that aren't getting it are the ones that are they're the nuts and bolts guys that uh, don't believe that consciousness has any any uh, tie into this whole game, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. They, um, I mean, last year was was. Full of them. I mean, the one over New York City, Russia, uh, what are the places? Portland had a mm-hmm. bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, the just... one over New York City was, uh, and I can't believe they were trying to say those were balloons from from uh, Yonkers. Well, the it, balloons stayed there for like four hours, so yeah. Well, the, the wind... problem with it was that they that that the sighting started off, I think at night and in the morning too, and. Yeah, it started in the morning and stood through the night because uh, yeah. a major, I don't know if it was CBS or who it was, they were filming it at night as well. It's like, wow, I didn't know balloons could do that. Uh, yeah, and that, that, well, that's the other thing too is they didn't release those. They, they had that, uh, party, I guess, where they supposedly released the balloons was at, at 12. Uh, yeah, 12. And, and so then- the ships were already there. So the balloons went back in time to 9 a.m. where people started <laughs> filming it, and then they yeah. stood there throughout the whole t- – oh, those are amazing balloons. Now, come on, Ramon. You know, I was at 5175 last night. <laughs> and that's true, so. You didn't have any balloons with you, did you? No, I, I didn't. I did. I might have dro- – I must have dropped them on my way. <laughs> that's what happened. As I was slipping through October 13th. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> so – so for people to say that there's no major events that ah I just I remember I remember one guy in the news was saying okay those those might be balloons but then again balloons don't stay still <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so even you his know, own doubt was like being cut because he was just like ah it doesn't make any sense you know balloons are self illuminated and they light up at night you know so it really makes a lot of sense yeah. <laughs> so, so let's get a little bit into you because as far as like your your um, contact stories, uh, I, I could never get enough of that. Um, recently, in the in the past uh, year, have you have any uh, more contacts? Um, basically, it's continuous. It's like there's always telepathic. You know contact going on and and the you know the clearings that we did today you know we had we did six yesterday and five today they always end it end up with initiating people into conscious contact that you know their own personal contact so um that's ongoing and and so many people are are actually taking advantage of that and and making their own personal connection with these beings these ultra dimensional beings so so that um that's basically just an ongoing thing that's happening here as far as uh, the face-to-face things that are in the physical. Those really haven't – we haven't had that for a while. And and they explained that why why they were doing that. 
you know, they'll let us see the ships and they do the flyovers and they, they come down really low, treetop level. We've got a lot of footage of that, but they said when they start landing and having face to face contact and especially if there's any technology exchanged or anything else that, you know, we're going to have, you know, the military <laughs> totally surround us as well as every agency and, and basically I won't have this farm anymore. Mm. So, so they, they can't really do that, you know, anymore. They did it in the very beginning, but once I went public, they said that that was it. They couldn't be coming down on that level. Well, that's pretty and understandable. Not, yeah. And they're not really worried about themselves. They're worried about the ground crew or the people on the ground. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if enough people get together and just say, hey, uh, stop shooting at them, you know, we want to know who they are and we want to clean up this planet and we want to work with higher evolved civilizations. You know, when the mass consciousness or the hundredth monkey shifts, you know, then they can start landing and, and start helping out. Well, we got to wait for the shift. Yeah. Let the I, shift I'm happen. All, yeah. I'm all making it happen. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we're doing what we can. Mm-hmm. We're trying. We're. we're I, de- I definitely know. I know both Ramon and I are. We. Uh, we project ourselves pretty well, I think, and. Uh, uh, you know, doing our part, spreading the spreading the knowledge, the miracle. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I'm definitely finding more and more people that are. Uh, waking up and, and, and starting to get this. So compared to um, 10 years ago. Oh, there's we, no comparison for 10 years ago. Yeah, exactly. No. So, I mean, these these kind of shows are popping up everywhere as well. And I'm yeah, also- and in, even what's, it's kind of surprising me that how much of it's on major media now. I mean, uh, I mean, you got to go to the history channels and stuff, but those are history channels are become pretty major. I mean, uh, it, even if it is it is uh, you know the watered down version, what you get through those, uh, uh, I've been pretty impressed the last couple of years with uh, the information that is coming out. I mean, I think that that ancient ancient aliens series was awesome. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. I definitely want to. I'll probably watch that. You know, just YouTube it or something, but yeah, it's on uh, Tom's. It's on your YouTube channel, right, Tom? Uh, no, I don't think I have any of them. On. Well, I have, might have a couple of them on there, but oh, I thought you did. If you have a good link, send it to me. I'll watch it. The um, the uh, yeah, definitely the mainstream is starting to get this out. Um, what's really sad is like you know, even National Geographic is it says when aliens attack, you know. Right, yeah. they're they're trying to they're trying to turn it you know turn it into the evil side of it, but uh, you know the it's being brought into the, the it's being brought into the consciousness and and you know I got to give credit to you know a, a good chunk of society that they're not that stupid to know that you know first alien that comes here is going to kill us you know yeah <laughs> well yeah. you know the, the thing is is that. Here's the deal, the way I understand it, is that back a long time ago in the days of Eisenhower, you know, they they had an agreement between some groups, and, and two different groups came in, and one was the benevolent ones, and extremely advanced, and they're more like us, and and they said, hey, you know, uh, we want to work with you, but here's the deal, you got to get rid of your nuclear weapons and choose peace, and we will give you technologies that will, you know, turn the planet around and clean up your environment. But we won't unless you, you know, choose peace because you'll you'll start using these technologies in ways that will destroy your whole civilization. So anyway, the other group said, hey, I tell you what, we don't care. We'll just give you this technology and uh, you can weaponize it, do whatever you want with it. We don't care, but uh, we just want to snag a few of your people and, and do some experiments and and get some genetics, you know, to help our race because they're a dying race, and that's the greys and, and some other low-level contacts. So, unfortunately, the government did go with the low-level contacts, and there was an extreme price to pay in the end. It didn't work out too well. Yeah. And they, they realized that, that they made a serious mistake. You know, with all the abduction thing got out of hand, uh, they lost control of the situation. It just got real ugly. 
But, uh, you know, now we have another opportunity. We're right at that threshold again where we can choose peace, we can get rid of our nuclear weapons, and we can align with this greater family of man that that are not self-serving. Yeah, they're very service-oriented, and they're here to assist us because we are their ancestors, basically. And they have a huge investment here genetically, just not just with humans, but with animals and plants and things of that nature. And so, you know, these this is like the Pleiadians, the Orion Council of Light, the Arcturians, Andromedans, Syrians, you know, the, the ones that are here in full service mode. And we have that opportunity again to join this group. And I think this time the people are going to have to awaken and demand this. You know, so we can shift and go in in the direction we need to go, um, because that old program is phasing out. The the low level contacts are ending, and they're not being allowed to come in anymore and interfere with our evolutionary process. I'm looking for that hundreds monkey. <laughs> Where yeah. is he at? Where is he at? Yeah, he, uh, he's out there eating a dirty potato somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Just Probably about to wash it. Like sitting in McDonald's, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, let's go over quickly um, from your from your knowledge. How many different um, races are out there? Because some one of my um, there's a student I have that she, she'll take my class and. She'll ask me a lot of questions about this stuff, and she's had some amazing experience herself. And I think yesterday I kind of like blew her mind a little bit. She asked me about the different races, and I, and I was going through them. But well, what are some of the races that? Well, about how how many do you think are are coming here right now, James? It it's kind of interesting because. You know, to explain that, we have to understand the multidimensional relationship and and what's happening there because, you know, we have beings that are coming here from, you know, the fourth dimension, the fifth, sixth, seventh dimension. We have ninth dimensional beings that are coming in to the planet right now to help out. And we also have, you know, some of the third dimensional stuff that's happening or, or the low level stuff in the fourth dimension. So, so there's so many different groups coming here with different intentions. Uh, to name them all uh, would would be forever. But I can talk about the ones that that I like that I like to work with, and I work a lot with the Palladians. Uh, they're the ones that actually started the colonies of Atlantis and Lemuria, and their ancient ancestors are Lyrian. They're the, Ly- the from from Lyra, and. Uh, and that group, I work a lot with that group. And then there's the Orion Council of Light, which actually the Palladians actually established, or the Illyrians actually established a base in the Orion system as well. So there seems to be some tall grays that come from that system too that people are having problems with, uh, you know, that aren't so benevolent, that have a different agenda going. But, you know, yeah, that. I, I heard the same thing about some uh, human types. Yeah, come from that system that work with those tall uh, grays. Yeah, exactly. And I, you know, I haven't met that group. I don't know who they are, but uh, uh, you know, we use our own inner sensitivity to discern, you know, what a being's nature is and what their agenda is. And you know, you can talk to them just for a few minutes, and you'll you'll know what their program is, and you know what what their agenda is. And if it doesn't feel right, you know, it's usually not. <laughs> usually right, isn't right. right. Yeah, but, you gotta uh, trust. Gotta trust your own feelings. Yeah, and and we like you know we work a lot with the Andromedans, you know the Arcturians and and uh, the Andromedans who have magnetized light bodies. You know they're eight to ten feet tall and often are mistaken for archangels. And you know there's so many different groups out there, but the one I've been fascinated with lately are these Syrian feline beings. <laughs> I knew you were going to mention them. <laughs> yeah, I've been known throughout history as as Narsringa. Uh, what, uh, what do the uh, Mexicans call them? Because I know they, they've been experiencing them a lot. You know, you they know? did have some landings in Mexico. A lot of people have seen them. Uh, we we had, recently we found, they're were, they were like the the Kahari or something like that, or the Kalhari. I can't remember what the, that's the name of the lion ones. 
I may not have the name right. I'll have to go back and look at it. But there, there is a group that uh, that comes in uh, that that are like the uh, Sekhmet in Egypt, and they're very tall humanoid beings with like lion heads. Are you talking about the Hathor, or different? No, it's different. Uh, the Hathor are a different group. Uh, you know, they're they're another group, but. Uh, uh, these beings are, are and, and the felines are cat-like. You know, they have a, a feline uh, head, you know, and a human body. It, it's really interesting, but these beings have been around forever, and they're benevolent protectors. And, and they're coming in real strong right now because there are a lot of light workers that need protection right now, yeah. you know, due you, to various... How, you close, hear, how close do you think the, the, they are to, in appearance, to, uh, like, the... Uh, the Navi in uh, in Avatar. You know, extremely close, very very close, and and uh, uh, you know they they um, a little different. What I've seen is they have very close fur on their on their. Uh, it's it's I've seen mostly white or uh, a gold fur on them, and uh, and they look very. When the first one I met was was blonde, you know, she was had the beautiful blonde mane or hair. And oh, had, that's had the her, drawing that you have on your website. Exactly, yeah. And she had her back to me, and she was on a ship with all these other beings on it. It was like a Federation ship with a lot of different types of beings, and she was at a panel, like a, a, a console, you know, sitting there. And and when I saw her, I. I out went out of body and ended up on the ship and I'm just standing there looking at her and I go, Boy, she's beautiful from the back, you know. And she stood up and turned around and looked at me and, and I just was shocked. I go, Whoa, you know, mm. it's it's a feline, you know, it's like a humanoid feline. I've never seen one before that I knew of, you know, in this lifetime. And uh she just runs up to me and gives me this big hug like I'm a long lost brother. And and it was just so uh, incredible, you know, the energy and, and uh, so loving. And, you know, I found out later that I was actually one of them, that I've actually been one of them in a past life, and they're like family. So a, a lot of us, we've been all over the universe, and, and we've just been trapped into this belief system that we're a body and a, and a personality here on Earth, and we've forgotten. But, you know, we we do have all these relations you know, throughout the universe, and we're eternal beings, and we've been around forever. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people, um, there's, um, on Facebook, there's a group called Esoteric uh, Group, I think, or Esoteric Mysteries, uh, I can't remember the name right now. Anyway, um, a lot of people there, they'll post, you know, experiences and stuff, and one that's been becoming very common um, is... People, a lot of men meeting these feline, uh, female felines, and actually having relationships with them in their dreams or out of body experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recently, um, when was it? Like several, maybe a month ago, two months ago, I had a dream where I also met some, they were half feline, half human, and they were from the future. Um, in the, they were telling me in the dream or out of body. I, I can't really tell the difference in, in that experience. But ha have you been hearing a lot of that, where um, a lot of people just in their dreams and out of body experience been meeting a lot of these felines? That has been happening um, quite a bit. But uh, you know, with me, there wasn't you know any sexual relationship at all. It felt more like you know a, a sister. You know, another sisterly thing, and and you know the thought has crossed my mind. <laughs> you know what would happen? Um, yeah, I mean, I saw the drawing, and and she's just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, wow. I'd probably I'd probably end up you know not surviving the encounter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> keep your claws I, I, in, please. <laughs> oh, I keep. They have claws. You Do know, you, it's everybody uh, asked me that. It, you know, I didn't see them. If they are, they're retractable. But the uh, um, I've seen. You know, when they move, it's amazing because they can move either on all fours or stand upright and walk like anybody else. And uh, so they're know, extremely agile. 
Oh, yeah, extremely agile, and they'll jump in front of you, and they'll move, and their tails, you know, swishing back and forth, and I know when Khan saw them here, he actually got a photograph of some six-dimensional ones that actually appeared here, and when they appeared to him, he was holding his heart, he was saying, oh, so holy, so holy, you know, like they were just, they were so high and so beautiful connecting with them. We and, we asked him about that, and he was yeah. saying the same thing. So sexy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Then, yeah. I remember that. That was good. That's what he said. He goes, so sexy body, you know. So I I thought that was just hilarious. You know? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, no, we we definitely asked him a lot about that one because that was just hilarious. That one well, and the. It's uh, just the way they move. They're so agile and they're so playful and loving, and you feel this total bliss hit when you're around them and this incredible love that, that, you know, and when you have a being that is so exotic like that and it can move, you know, in, in such an exotic way too, it definitely, it, you know, it, it, they just exude that energy. It's, it's a very earthy, earthy energy. Graceful mm -hmm. inside and out. Mm hmm Yeah. Every level. Have you, um, speaking of Khan, have you ever had any experience with the, uh, Prey Mantis? Uh, beans. You know, I have, and I've, I've heard other people say that there's connections to them, that they've seen some standing. You know, people that are psychic have seen some standing behind me before. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I, to me, I, I haven't had one actually appear to me and and say, "Hey, what's up?" You know, and and uh, you know, want to share a bug or anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I know they exist. I've had in meditations, I've seen them. Uh, but I, I don't know a lot about them other than I know they do exist. And I've heard that they're masters in genetics and, and uh, healing and things of that nature. Yeah, I remember the, uh, the I asked Khan about it because Nate told me about it. And then I had to ask Khan. And uh, he was saying just they're ex extremely fast and strong like it, which makes me wonder the whole style of prey mantis did one of them come down and teach it to the chinese because khan was saying that it would tap him and he would just get pushed around like a little kid and for those of you who never met khan he's what six three six four six six isn't he Oh yeah, he's six six. Yeah, six six. What two fifty, three hundred pounds? And uh, I don't know, he's big. yeah. He's big. Anyway, the spray mantis was just like pushing him around like a little kid. Um, mm -hmm. But he said they were extremely playful and, and just masters at, at martial arts. Hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. They um, you watch them act. You know, I heard. I heard a lot of ancient stories where beings did appear and and teach different practices, you know, down here, and that's where a lot of the ancient martial arts came from. Yeah, Sun Sun knows a lot of those stories. There's mm -hmm. the the one story that I've been trying to find that Sun told me. He's not sure where. Supposedly, some museum here has the hand of a reptilian that a samurai had cut off during a battle, or something like that. Yeah, you know, there's another there's another uh, temple there where somebody has an orb like a oh it's like a crystal orb and with direct communication to these higher ultra dimensional beings. Do you and, know where? No, I don't. But I've heard quite a few stories about it, and I guess I guess it's not easy to find, uh, and uh, they're not real forthcoming about it. You have to be at a certain level. And, you know, and they'll know, you know, if you're ready yet. And, and But there has been several people that have talked about this experience, and they, they've actually experienced it. And they got to talk straight to these, like, seventh-dimensional beings or something through this this orb. And I guess the, the, the being himself appeared to this guy and handed it to him, a monk, and said, here, if you ever want to communicate with me, here's how you, here's how you do it. Yeah. There was a, um, uh, I met this guy who was a, uh, not Taoist, uh, Shinto, Shinto priest. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, had he ever experienced anything? And he told me that once in a while he'll see like a, a little dragon 
in the temple, in this temple in, in uh, the Guma uh, prefecture, which is two hours drive from um, from Tokyo. But yeah, there's a, a lot of tiny little temples that you're not sure what they're what they're about. Huh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to like find that place. Yeah, I would look into that. I've been trying to find out more and more about dragons because people I know that are in the know, they, they used to say dragons were the protectors of man. And and there's a lot of different types of dragons out there. And, you know, a lot of people have that misnomer that they're all reptilian and they're bad and they're and uh it's you know, this doesn't seem to be the case when you really do the research. But uh, there seems to be good dragons and other dragons you don't want to deal with. And I, I've seen a lot of the dragons supposedly emulate the, their master or the people that are working with them, their consciousness. So, so it, it's it's really interesting how how that that's all coming out. And and I know some women that are making dragon essences, like healing essences. Oh, the head. women from uh, Brazil. Yeah, they yeah. live in Brazil or something like that. Yeah, and I I thought that was kind of interesting, but you know they told me they gave me this spray, and she said that if you use this spray and put it on your back, you know where I had a back injury or whatever, and they they said put this on your back and this dragon will come to you, and you know they and uh, so they said it was a red dragon, and and I thought it was interesting where I have have had people actually that see this red dragon coming around and it's very benevolent you know it's a very powerful energy it's very benevolent and and a lot of times they talk about in the ancient past you know the gold dragon body where you work with the gold dragon and right and uh it's a very high state of, of awareness and consciousness and then there's the white dragon when you align with that you're in pure service mode but you're always going to be poor you know <laughs> but uh, but you'll have abilities and powers, but you always you're, you're always going to be serving others, you know, uh, and you know different dragons, but represent different things. But you know, I, I haven't had a lot of experience. I've seen golden dragons before. I've seen white dragons. Uh, I've seen the red dragon, and uh, it, it just seems like there's definitely a a level of consciousness or entities that that are 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 working with different people, you know, hopefully for good. But you know, there could be some negative stuff going on out there too with dragons. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. So what um, about the what about uh, the benevolent reptilians? Uh, you know, I can't believe that all reptilians should could be classified as the malevolent. Yeah. You know, there is, you know, a lot of times there's some very ancient stories about some reptilians that pretty much keep to the, themselves. And they don't really want to deal with humanity because, you know, we kill anything that's odd or anything that's, that's, you know, we see it as a threat. You know, anything we don't understand automatically goes into the kill it or it's, or it's a demon, you know, or, right. or something category. So, there's supposedly some very highly advanced reptilian beings, and you know I've heard of the Nagas and stories about them, that they really don't want to work with humanity because we are too barbaric and primitive, and and uh, and you know I've heard a lot of stories about that. You know I haven't really encountered those groups, but I also heard that in a lot of the reptilian ranks, where there's a lot of different reptilians that. They're actually breaking ranks right now and realize that they have to shift as well with where the earth is going if they're going to stay here. And they also know that there's a great war coming, like a battle, you might say, between, you know, the self-serving ones and the service to other ones and the higher dimensions. And, and they pretty much know how it's going to turn out. And they're already jumping ranks and saying, you know, we don't want to be uh, a part of this anymore. So I, I've been getting a lot of stories where people have actually had contacts with these reptilian beings have showed up, and they they have the same story. They said something's going to go down, and we want to be on the right side of the fence when it does. And and from what we've seen, our side loses, <laughs> you know. Hmm. And 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 so they're jumping ranks. That's a they're very jumping. very positive message there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I always tell people, if you don't know what you're doing, if you can't walk in your self-authority, 
and you don't have your contact or connections with the higher beings, uh, it's best to avoid, you know, a lot of the grays or the reptilian stuff because they'll just spin you and take you all over the place. And, and uh, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, you can get into trouble. Yeah. They'll, they'll stroke your ego. Exactly. And they'll, they'll give, you'll tell you you're the special one and, 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 uh, you know, pretty soon they own you. Yeah. You know, there's, there's the, that's what Jenny was talking about. Is yeah. that there's a price to pay and you'll get abilities and powers and cities, you know, they'll give you that. But, but in the end, there's a price to pay and, and, and a lot of them are actually feeding off of you. You know, they're giving you some abilities, but they're actually, you know, feeding on off of you, and eventually they own you, you know, if you go down that road. So, mm-hmm. you know, every every shaman has a choice in their evolutionary process or their awakening that they hit that crossroad and they go into pure service mode or they go into self-service, you know, with all the money and the bling and everything else and the notoriety and, and, and very few, you know, take the high road and stay on the path of service and and it's kind of sad, but you know, it's it's there are some real, real ones out there that are pure service mode and, and are there to help and heal. There's a lot of mode that have abilities in cities, but they're stealing people's power and and actually distracting people from making their own personal God connection because they're worshiping that guru or that being. You know, yeah. there's there's uh, one in Queens, New York, <clears throat> that he's he's called the Amazon Shaman. And that guy, um, you have to be completely careful with that guy. That guy is a complete charlatan. There's so many stories of people going to him for help, for example, that, and he'll just like tell them, oh, you know, if you don't give me $1,000 for this cleansing, then, you know, really bad things are going to happen to you. So he'll, he'll pre- pretty much use the fear mode to get things out of, you know, get money out of people. Yeah, there's whole whole organizations that do that. You know, I know, I won't mention them so we don't get sued, but, you know, (laughs) there's groups that have these galvanic skin response objects, you know, and and they'll go in and they'll do this little test on you and and they'll go, oh, you know what, Um, if you don't go through our counseling process, you're probably going to commit suicide, Uh, you know, in the next five years, you're not even going to be here. And, you know, they'll give you all these stories and then they'll say, you know, it's at least five grand for the first level. And then there's, you know, I don't know how many levels after that. And and these people buy into it and and, you know, and they do help them in a way. There's they do help them because they have the technology to figure out, you know, what's wrong and heal it. And, And they give somebody who's who's very down or very, you know, distraught or whatever, they do give them some form of family or community or whatever. But, you know, in the long run, they own you. And uh, it's it's very sad to watch that, to watch that happen. And they usually prey on very famous, rich people. Yeah, there's, um, there's a few groups here that um, really give the whole eat, Tea and and spiritual movement a very bad name. Um, oh yeah. You know, as soon as you start talking about that you're into ETs here, it's not that I don't believe. The mentality here in Japan is it's not that I don't believe. Is that you're one of those sketchy kind of people who follow the weird religion. Yeah. And that's that's the idea here because there's actually a lot of people who, you know, make these. I guess they're working with, with these low low levels because mm-hmm. um, it's all about you know collecting the money and and praying to these these aliens and they have a lot of information but it's always wrapped up in something funny. Yeah, it, it's disempowering. You know, it's it, even in the UFO community, you definitely see that. You see. People out there, you know, saying, you know, see me, dig me, look what I've done, and I did this. And I, when you, all you hear is I, I, I all the way through their program, and uh, and pretty soon you're listening to them, and, and you're forgetting that, guess what, you can make contact with these beings, and you don't have to have a go-between. You don't need somebody out there, you know, that's 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 the, the new UFO messiah or whatever. It's not It's not that. <laughs> You know, everybody can, everybody can make contact, and 
you know, the people you're you always tell people, you know, the latest research they're finding out in the DNA and, and the uh, genome experiments and everything else is that we are loaded with alien DNA. You know, and I tell people, you know, you want to see an e- ET, go look in a mirror. Yep. You know, we're. We're all colon- we're, we're all byproducts of the star nations colonizing Earth and other places which came here as well, and and it's it's like, you know what's what's the big deal? I mean, there's they're us. A lot of these beings returning our ancestors. They're they're us. They're, you know, we're of the same lineage, and and it's time to welcome them as brothers and stop watching all these lame Hollywood movies where they're coming here to eat us and turn us into rice peel off and slice and dice us and turn us into manure, you know, it's yeah. to grow some mushroom or something. I don't know. <laughs> they always have new creative ones, you know, out there. Yeah. Everything. It kills me with the Hollywood. It, it's always a very, I, I can't even remember the last time I saw an Indian movie that had nothing to do with violence. Yeah, I don't think we're out there. I think E.T. was the last one. (laughs) Yeah, they had E.T. and then they had Cocoon. Oh, yeah, Cocoon. Those were great. And that's about it. I don't, I can't think of any, oh, maybe Starman. Starman, yeah. K-Pax. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Copax or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, what else? I mean, there's been, everything else is like they're coming here to slice and dice, conquer and and eat us and take our planet, basically. Yeah. That, you know, that one, uh, Cocoon, do, do you think that was based on, on real real aliens? or? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there are beings that are like that, that are, have just pure energy bodies. They don't have physical bodies. And I don't like to call them aliens. It's kind of a, a bad term for them. They're, they're really... You know, the greater family of man that's highly evolved. And, you know, there's there's beings out there with magnetized light bodies that are beyond the energy body beings. And there some beings are just pure consciousness and they have their own Merkabas. And they they travel through thought and they just put their thought on where they want to go and that and they're there. And and so there's all these different types of beings out there and, and you know, it's sad that Hollywood wouldn't move in that direction. Yeah. And, and make I, I always wanted him to do a movie that you know about Blagi, one of the Palladians that we've been working with, and have her you know walking between worlds and talking and talking about the true history of Earth and other civilizations in the galaxy and their histories and and doing this whole educational process and and in a movie at the same time bringing out the truth you know of, of what really happened on Earth. Yeah. So spe- speaking of, how much do you know about um, Lyra and, and the history of Lyra? What what happened in Lyra? Well, the in Lyra and their ancient history, they they had a situation where they used to always divide into groups, and and that you know they would rise in power and they would get to a certain level, and then they would have a division. That sounds familiar. And a power struggle, and then, blam, they'd end up, you know, end up destroying half their planet or whatever, and then start over. And and so they had a long history of that. And that same history played out because they went from there to the Pleiades. You know, the peaceful Lyrians split and got out of there, and they went and started their own group in the Pleiades system, and they had advanced technology there. And then from there, they went to Mars and the Earth, and... And they also were on Maldak or, or Malona. People have different names for the planet that blew up. That's the asteroid system now. But, you know, that same energy has been crossed over. And, you know, they created the uh, colonies of Atlantis and Lemuria. And and then they rose up to a very high state of being and, and really high technology and spiritual practices and things of that nature and then Atlantis fell and started misusing the technology uh, because they had they split into two groups and one Edgar Casey talks about the sons of Belial who were very self serving and they wanted to use the technology for their own gain and and then there's uh, you know to oppress others and control and manipulate others and then they had the law of one which were the people that so those they, they actually serve those less fortunate to bring everybody up at the same time and uh, they saw the creator in everything and everyone you know the omnipresent creator 
and they had their clash, you know, and, and that became a big mess and everybody had to start over again as primitives. But, uh, you know, you can see that same scenario being played out right now with the Democrats and the Republicans. But but the only problem now is that we, there is no there there is no uh, such thing as two parties and there's the Republicans you know and right. and, uh, <laughs> and basically they are owned by the you know the the major corporations who are owned by the the power elite or the powers that be and and really this this whole political system we have right now is is just a really bad B movie. You know, it's it's a bad joke being played on, yeah. on humanity, and I, I think finally people are waking up to that. I think we yeah. got. A, I think we got an excellent chance of uh, making it this time. Oh, I do too. I think I think we're going to go through this thing, and I, I really do think that the big hole card right now is nature, and the fact that we are moving into alignment with galactic core with just huge energies yeah. coming in, lifting energies. You know, along with the beautiful many, you know, all the masters, saints, and sages, and the Pleiadians, and the Orion Council of Light, and Andromedans, and Syrians, and all these beings now, they're, they're lending their energies to this process. I, I really do feel that the days of tyranny are very short, and we are going to go through a huge uh, shift, you know, uh, a... Um, or what would you call it, like an exponential shift in evolution, you know, quantum leap in evolution yeah. here real yeah. short and, and get through all these things. But, you know, the, between now and then, we need to, they an old saying, you know, praise Allah, tie your camel. <laughs> you know, so so we need to take care of our physical needs and, and, and everything else and, and then, uh, you know, move from there. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that... Um with this generation of young kids that are growing up and like 10 and under when they start having kids i think that that generation might be the ones that are going to be you know a whole new species oh yeah if not sooner yeah i've seen too a lot of the uh you know the the 15 maybe through 25 year olds right now are are pretty awake as to what's going on and, and are not participating you know in the system which is going to be its demise as well so yeah. so it seems like each new generation they they end up becoming uh stronger and stronger you know and and uh there's less uh what do you call it less uh dogma they're, they're <laughs> harder to corrupt and yeah and to, and to to uh dumb down those um Speaking of that generation, those are the same ones who are like ex-military, who are the whole, um, what's it called, military against... Super soldiers and stuff? Or? No, no, they're the ones who who are, like, are speaking out the most about the tyranny and what's going on. Uh, oh, yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. the guy who got body slammed by the police officer. Uh, the oath, memorial. Oath, bear, oath bearers or whatever they call them. Oath keepers, yeah. Yeah. They um he's an ex military. Mm hmm. because um, this is a, a wonderful speech on him. Yeah. But, yeah. There was that one kid who came up to the ranch last year, who was completely blown open. I don't know, I don't want to mention his name. Um, but I don't know if you remember him, James. That I asked you about him, and you were like, "Wow, he's completely open." Mm hmm. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Excellent drummer yeah, there, too. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. It's it's amazing. They're they're waking up, they're opening up, and they're doing it when they're in the system, and they're just walking away from the system, and they're they're being very vocal about what's going on and saying this isn't right. You know, I'm out of here. Yeah. And you know, they're paying a dear price for it, but they they're standing tall and just saying enough's enough and and to me i totally commend those people and they have my you know full support and and uh you know my my greatest uh admiration yeah the the other thing I, i've been noticing is um with with your generation um james the a lot of guys who are just turned 40 uh 50 or about to turn 50 
or or been you know that I'm finding they they're not aging the same way as the generation before. It's a lot of times when guys reach fifty, as uh, um, Bob Dean said it. You deserve the face. Well, what, what was it, Tom? You oh God, I can't you- remember how. You do you, des- you get you the deserve- face you de- you deserve. Something like that. By the time you're fifty or yeah. something like that, mm-hmm. it's h- hilarious when he said it. But um, yeah. yeah, I'm finding that a lot of these guys are not aging the same way. But it seems to you know I I work with a lot of people that have taken a very spiritual path and they they do their practices. You know, they they definitely do their whatever that is, and they do their meditation. They're they're just hooked into a higher consciousness and energy, which actually maintains the body and sustains the body. And, you know, I had a woman I work with. I don't even know how old she is now. I'm I'm not sure, but, I mean, at 60-something, she looked 40, you know. So, so, uh, you know, and she was very, very plugged in. and, And so I'm just seeing that over and over again. You know, I think women should spend less less time in the mirror, you know, polishing their face and putting on all that makeup and more time in spirit, you know, making their spirit connection. And, and they'll see that their beauty will come out from within and they'll just exude, you know, and they'll be much more desirable than with all the, the you know, pancake and, <laughs> and yeah. lipstick and everything else, yeah. you know, that's going down. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been uh, noticing that. That's true. People who who've been meditating for twenty, thirty years, they it really shows that they have been doing their work because age wise, oh, yeah. they just look amazing. It's like you don't even believe them when they tell you they're fifty or sixty. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you look around thirty five. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There's a woman. Uh, recently, I was trying to remember who she is, and she was, she was like seventy something, and she was just drop dead gorgeous, and and didn't have any makeup on or anything else, and she hardly eats. Uh, she's not a vegetarian though. She you know she ate meat, and and uh, I can't remember who she was, but you know she eats very little and and doesn't need much, and very plugged in and uh, uh, very service oriented, and and you can see it, you know, and she's just. Her eyes are lit, you know. She's living life and loving life and, and just lit up from within. Wow. Yeah, so we're coming up at the top of the hour. Um, I want to give James a chance to... Um, yeah, why don't you uh, give us... Uh, what, do you, what do you want everybody to take away from this show tonight? You know, I think the main thing right now is that it's it's totally imperative that people master loving detachment and become the observer and make their own personal God connection. And those three things will carry you all the way through the days to come because we are going to be having some extreme challenges on every level and and we're going to need all those connections, you know, to get us through it. I like that loving detachment. Yeah. yeah. So the conference is June twenty fourth. Yeah, and just email us or call us. You know, go to eSeti dot org and and email us through there or call us. To, it's not up on the website, so it's better just to call us to find out if there's any space available. Mm. Is it filling up fast like last year? Because I know last year it was. Just... Oh yeah. Yeah, it's totally filling up. Mm. So me and Tom will be there. Uh, Probably telling you where to park. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Like last year. Among yeah. other things, yeah. 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 Let's see what? Right. Let's say I pick you up at like eight forty-five or something like that. The twenty-second, Ramon, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So we we should be at at your place by what twelve? Yeah. Uh, earlier. Yeah, twelve, eleven, twelve. Oh, great. Yeah, so have some hamburgers on the grill for me, please. <laughs> I haven't had a good hamburger in I don't know how long. Yeah. <laughs> have some buffalo burger. Some what? Oh. I have some, some buffalo burger for you. There we oh, go. Oh, wow. Go. My mouth just got watery. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, James's website is eceti.org, and... Uh, I I would urge all of you listening to uh, stop by there and take a look. He's got uh, some a few uh, really fantastic books that he's he's done 
that uh, yeah, you want to you want to learn some stuff. Uh, check out those books. Uh, yeah, got the couple DVDs now, the new one, which I have yet to see. Which uh, I might try to make it up to Rainier here next weekend and and watch that. But uh, we'll see. I'll see it eventually. Um, so you have the conference coming up, and then you have George Cavallis coming up, or yeah, yeah, and then. Uh... Yeah, he's coming up and doing a talk, and we might have a few other things. We'll have some Yigong classes and, uh, you know, a lot of other things, that, that uh, some self-mastery classes. And you everything. also have uh, Hillary coming up as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, all that stuff's on our website if you want to find out more information. Okay. Yeah, great. So, we'll let you go then now. Okay. Well, thanks, right. everybody, for listening. Uh, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance. And uh, we will talk to everybody next week. Good night.